So you want an Indian Scout bobber. Let me guess, you're a reformed street squid who is comfortably settling into your motorcycle golden years and you're looking to exchange your four-cylinder death trap for a blacked out V-twin bob job. Well, you're in luck because Mike Wolf from American Pickers reignited everyone's interest in one of motorcycling's infamous failures. Seriously, that show came out in 2010 and Polaris bought Indian in 2011. I don't think that's just a coincidence. Anyway, you're ready to hang up your leather track suit and go down to the Tractor Supply Co. where every red-blooded American cruiser rider buys their riding gear. You know how that one hockey bro from high school decided to play guitar and get an anchor tattoo because he realized that the social clout from high school athletics exponentially deteriorates after graduating and, well, he needed to establish a new identity if he wanted to even have the slightest chance of procreating? Well, just like that, you can change too. You can put the spec sheet in the paper shredder, get a Peaky Blinders haircut, find your new favorite Instagram filter, and get an off-brand Harley Davidson. Let's talk about the Indian Scout Bobber. Before we get started on this journey together, be sure to click the notification bell. Come on, now you want to outsmart the algorithm, don't you? Thanks to Rockform for proudly sponsoring today's video. We'll talk to you more about them in just a moment. So, Indian has been making motorcycles intermittently since 1901. They were originally known as the Hendy Manufacturing Company until the hubris of the Roaring Twenties led them to rebrand as Indian Motorcycles in 1923. During the early years of Indian's manufacturing, the company was relatively influential and won multiple races and set land speed records on what was the equivalent of a Schwinn Beach Cruiser with a sputtering and clattering V-twin engine nestled into the frame. Seriously, those guys had nads bigger than coconuts. During World War I, Indians sold their entire fleet of motorcycles to the US government, leaving their dealers high and dry without inventory. During this time, Indian's market share rapidly dwindled and laid the groundwork for Indian to forever ride on the coattails of Harley-Davidson. From 1920 until 1949, Indian manufactured what would be recognized as their most iconic motorcycle, the Indian Scout. It is hard to determine whether the Scout was actually popular at the time or if society has Mandela affected itself into romanticizing the fabled popularity of the motorcycle and the brand. During this time, after merging with automobile manufacturer DuPont, Indian's production facility was known as the Wigwam. Yikes, that doesn't age well, does it? The Scout at the time was an old-fashioned rickety V-twin motorcycle that came in multiple different engine configurations. During World War II, Indian was again spanked by HD when the American military determined the Scout to be too heavy and too expensive and instead opted to make the Barn Shield the official proud motorcycle sponsor of the United States military with the use of their WLA Liberator. What a different time it was. In 1945, Indian again relinquished ownership to a new controlling party who began discontinuing their flagship motorcycles like the Scout and the Chief to sell small displacement commuter bikes that were unreliable and everyone hated. In 1953, all production was stopped. That doesn't really sound like a glamorous history if you ask me, but something about the brand, which was also not glamorous, was determined to have some value because after shutting down in the early 50s, a bunch of different companies purchased Indian and tried to revitalize the brand. Most of these acquisitions were thinly veiled cash grabs where companies were importing and rebranding mopeds with the Indian name. Fast forward to the early 2000s and a few different companies tried their hand at designing engineering original Indian motorcycles, but they failed too. Go figure. Then, like God being lowered onto the stage in the final act of a play, miraculously resolving the woes of our protagonist, Polaris bought Indian in 2011. For the first time in, like, a hundred years, Indian had the chance of surviving past its embryonic stage, right? Eleven years later, it's easy to see why Polaris has managed to reignite interest in Indian motorcycles, but immediately following the gradual decline of victory, Polaris' previous motorcycle company built on the coattails of Harley-Davidson, I can imagine riders were originally a little suspect, but lo and behold, I think it's safe to say Polaris is onto something with their most current iterations of the Indian brand. Polaris bought Indian in 2011, but they didn't realize the new Scout models until 2015. These bikes are inspired by the vintage styling of the prehistoric Scouts of history, but that's about where the similarity stops. The Scout was a motorcycle designed for the standard cruiser market, unladen with bulky luggage or big fairing, and has a modern liquid-cooled 1133cc V-twin engine. Compared to the big loping V-twins from Harley, the engine in the Scout is relatively refined. It has quite a bit of low-end grunt while continuing to out farther than any Harley would dare. At the crank, it makes a claimed 100 horsepower and 72 foot-pounds of torque, with the rev limiter not cutting in at about 8,300 RPM. The Scout ended up being named Motorcycle of the Year in 2015, and following its success, the smaller displacement Scout 60 came out in 2016, and then the Scout Bobber in 2018. The Scout Bobber is the edgelord variant of the motorcycle that Indian developed to appeal to younger riders who aren't as infatuated with chrome tassels or middle-of-the-road hokey Americana. 
The only differences between the Scout and the Scout Bobber are stylistic. They share the same 1133cc engine and 6 speed transmission. It has been given the standard bob job treatment with smaller cut down fenders, a solo seat, headlight cowl, and relatively low slung handlebars as far as cruisers go. If you don't get the bob job reference, be sure to go back and watch our Everything You Need to Know About Bobber Motorcycles video from a few months back. That was a good one. The Scout Bobber has more slammed rear suspension too, which gives it that low slung muscle bound bobber look while also giving it a super low 25.6 inch seat height. And by super low, I mean super low. At around 5'11", sitting on a scout bobber, my knees are so bent, I'm at a stoplight, I'm man sprinting so bad, I feel like I'm a doofus. But for short riders, it will make the bike very comfortable to ride. The slam suspension also makes it a bit of a pain on rougher rides and impedes its flickability, but with a super low center of gravity, it isn't the hardest cruiser to maneuver by any means. In true bobber fashion, it is quite the stripped down motorcycle. It is a single front brake disc, a six speed gearbox, and a single simple speedometer with a digital tack. Not too many features to write home about just other than the optional ABS, but a bike like this doesn't need tech or high end features. It's just a solidly built, stripped down, good looking cruiser, which is why I think it is so popular. And it is very, very popular. As far as the riding experience goes, the Scout Bobber is pretty enjoyable. It's got plenty of low end grunt while also continuing to make power as it's revved out further. You don't have to be constantly upshifting and digging for gears that there aren't like you do on certain Harley Davidson motorcycles. The engine has a nice grumble to it and with the right aftermarket exhaust, they sound pretty tame and idle with a nice growl and acceleration and some fun burbles on D-cell. They also don't have the ridiculous valve chain tratter you experience on a Sportster. The Bobber has interesting ergonomics with forward controls and a low slung handlebar combined with the super low seat height and you feel like you're in a bit of a gynecological position with your fit up front you. You get used to it, but coming from a sport bike or even a standard retro bike with the mids, you will feel a little bit awkward at first. With how low this motorcycle is, it is also really quick to scrape the wide foot pegs, but this is just another thing you must expect to sacrifice when getting on a cruiser. As far as cruisers go, the Scout Bobber kind of rips, and it won't rattle your fillings out or give you tinnitus like a Harley will. In black paint, the only color option available without ABS, the Scout Bobber costs $12,249. bucks. In matte black with ABS, it costs $13,649. Ouch. There are other colors available that vary slightly in price, but if you're getting a Bobber motorcycle, kind of needs to be black anyways. Let's take a look at some motorcycles that may rival the Scout Bobber. The clearest competitor is obviously going to be Harley Davidson. The real bike that comes the closest to the Scout Bobber in price will likely be the Sportster 48. The 48 has the same bob job accoutrement like the chopped fenders, chunky front tire, forward controls, and low slung handlebars. The 48 has an air cooled 1200cc engine that's making a pretty poor 60 horsepower and 73 foot pounds of torque. At the end of the day, the 48 is still just a sports turn and will be faced with the same shortcomings that I'm sure you've heard a million times by now. It costs $12,299, but it is down 40 horsepower from the Scout. That is a lot to sacrifice for the sake of a logo. A more worthy contender may be the new Harley Davidson Nightster. This bike is less edgy than the Evo Sportster, but its modern liquid cooled engine is suited for a fair comparison to the Scout. It has a 975cc V twin that makes 90 horsepower and 70 foot pounds of torque. It has ABS, traction control, and selectable ride mode, which is more tech than the Scout Bobber has, if that's important to you, in a cruiser that makes less than 100 horsepower. The Nightster has an MSRP of $13,499. While typically far from being regarded as edgy, Honda debuted their revamped Rebel line and hopped on the blacked out bobber bandwagon. The Rebel 1100 has sort of become the go-to metric cruiser in the last few years and it brings a genuine riding experience to the class instead of a contrived Harley knockoff like we've seen from the big four in the past. The Rebel 1100 uses the 1084cc parallel twin pull from the Africa twin that's putting down 86 horses and 72 foot pounds. It has a selectable ride mode, ABS, and Showa shocks. The engine isn't going to exactly behave as the same as a traditional V-twin would, but that's what lends itself to the Rebel's riding experience. It's like a hybridization of a sporty naked bike and a cruiser motorcycle. It is very lightweight, and the Rebel 1100 is the lowest means of entry at just 9,399 bucks. Personally, I kind of just think you should just get a Rebel 1100 if you're watching this video. We had one last year in 2021, great bike. As far as the long-term reliability of the Scout Bobber goes, there doesn't seem to be anyone having any major problems with any of these Scout lines since revitalization in 2015. And from what I've heard with other riders, Indian has been really easy to work with the instance of minor warranty work. If you're curious about aftermarket support or mountability, the Scout Bobber won't have anywhere near as many parts available as a Harley Davidson, but it is a better package from the factory anyway, so you won't immediately need to change 40% of the bike to make it rideable. It's really good out of the box. 
but there's still quite a few companies making cool parts for you to customize your bobber if you so desire. Scout Bobber is arguably one of the better bobber style motorcycles on sale today if you want a raw, edgy cruiser that makes decent power without any unnecessary frills, and it is very, very popular. Let me know what you think. Do you own a Scout Bobber? Let me know down in the comments. Would you like to see a Scout Bobber as a giveaway motorcycle on the channel? I think they're pretty cool, and I think they're pretty fun to look at uh, if a little compromised to ride, but yeah, just let me know. Thanks for watching the video. Fact. In 2017, Hasbro filed a trademark for Play-Doh's distinct smell of sweet, slightly musky vanilla fragrance with slight overtones of cherry mixed with the smell of salted, wheat-based dough. Goodbye.